even when people were like cheering me, I, I'd hear people behind the bench like, throw that ball like you chuck a watermelon. Mm. And, and wow. you know, just comments like that. And it's like, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just hear that. Right. I think a lot of people, when they see us express ourselves, it, 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 it bothers them. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it makes them uncomfortable. Everything that's occurred to us, whether it's, you know, when you're a child growing up playing football at the college level, just all the adversity, the naysayers. And then day, I, I feel like it makes us who we are. It makes us a better player. As I got to college, that's when I knew I had a gift. And Coach Sweeney sat me down and, and told me, him and Coach Morris was like, you're gonna be special. You're gonna make a lot of money playing this game and change a lot of lives by just playing football. I knew it was gonna be difficult when I started playing the position when I was very, very young. And I also knew there was another a bigger responsibility besides just me playing for that football team down the road. At, at the time that I was coming up, basically in the 70s, starting, the, starting to play the position in the 60s, actually in Pop Warner football, I even had a problem you know, just being able to play quarterback at my high school as an African American because we had coaches that just kind of felt that way, just kind of thought that way. As far as being able to go forward in the sport, I wasn't sure how far I was going to be able to go because there wasn't a whole lot of people like, like me out there playing it, and I knew it was going to be difficult. Yeah. But uh, you're still the guy that's got to make all those crucial decisions at the right time, and guys have to believe in you when they walk in that huddle. When they look in your eyes, you got to have a look that, that uh, we're going to take this ball down the field and we're going to score. And, and as much as we all wanted to do that for those reasons, there was a, it was a mentality out there that didn't want us to do it for those reasons because they didn't want to see an African-American guy in those type of leadership roles. I knew it was going to be a difficult journey for me, but um, it was something I was willing to, to, uh, to take on only because I felt like I could do it. And it's crazy that, I mean, because I remember my dad telling me, like, hey, you're always going to have to do a little more mm -hmm. sure. than the next guy. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. My high school coach was black, so right. I didn't really deal with it in high school, and I went to all-black high school, too. So once I got to Florida State, I definitely kind of, like, had that little chip on my shoulder mm -hmm. knowing that, like, I'm a black quarterback. Right. You know what I mean? So I can't, I can't go out the same way that my homies do. You know what I mean? Right. It's different. You got to have a different you, – you just got to act different. You yeah. know what I mean? You're literally the CEO of that franchise. Yeah, there's no question that society really uh, perceives African-American quarterbacks and white quarterbacks a lot differently. And I always had to worry about how I carried myself and couldn't always be myself. Uh, I always had to think I, I had to worry about being like the status quo, you know, what the other guys did and go along with what the other, the other quarterbacks during my era did, whether it was Joe Montana or Dan Marino or John Elway or all those guys. I didn't want to make myself look any different than I already looked skin color wise um, with the way I carried myself or the things that I tried to do. Deep down, like my background, so when I come home, like is, I am in the hood, I am in the projects, but I don't carry myself that way. Exactly. I, I carry myself this way because I, I listen, I have a great, you know, an, an open perspective, great awareness where I know I got to carry myself this way. And I got, like how you was with us, you know, coming up in, in this league, I got young people that's trying to be able to get out those same situations mm -hmm. I was in. So I've been taught well and been blessed around, you know, coaches and, and mentors that, that taught me the right way. I'm curious, and either of y'all can answer this, like how did y'all feel, you know, as far as the pro style? And this might be more for us as younger guys, because I don't know if they had a pro style versus a dual threat when you were coming out as far as like recruiting and all that. Right. But how did y'all feel about that? You know what I mean? Like how did that make you feel as a quarterback being categorized as pro style? And meaning pro style was usually the white guys. Right, dual, right. Dual threat was usually us. I feel like the QB position is the only position with two criteria. Mm -hmm. right. Dual threat and pro style. Right. right. Look, there's no run, run tight end or pass. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. One criteria, tight end. Tight end. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, when you're putting a dual threat, the first thing they think of is, oh, he can't throw. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, it's just based off the situation you're in. You know what, I think back to my time at Tennessee, when I first came on, you know, O-line struggling. So we know what all colleges do now. They start implementing the quarterback run series because they think scheme-wise, you know, the defense can't account, for, can't account for the QB and the running back and their run fits. So, you know, QB starts to selling that scheme just because his team starts doing successful, and the first thing you say is, oh, he can't throw, he's a run first guy. But at the end of the day, it's more the scheme that's giving him that connotation rather than his true skill set. Well, ours was even worse because it was the wishbone or the veer wow. or the 
straight drop back drop passer. Back that's all there was. Right. You know, at least at least with the uh, with the run pass option type offense, mm-hmm. at least you're throwing the football. Exactly. You right. know, but the wishbone in the in the veer, you're you're not throwing. Very not throwing much, it at all. You know? Yeah, you basically. And that's what back. they tried to put me in that 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 box of, mm-hmm. of being a running quarterback and I wasn't a running quarterback right. I was a good enough athlete where I could move yeah, around yeah, and yeah. things but I did not want to run the football mm-hmm. you know I wanted to go somewhere where I could throw and the schools that threw the football those were the ones that wouldn't, uh, wouldn't recruit, recruit you. me right and it's crazy how it's um they view it as a disadvantage um yeah. when it's really an advantage it's you an can advantage, do both man. you yeah. can throw you can pass mm-hmm. then you provide more to the table you get the offense more balance and it's tough for defense to defend so yeah we got penalized for being athletic exactly. for being too athletic for right. being too fast for mm-hmm. being able to move around too much yep. um, I know that's the way they looked at me and, and when I uh, would have my pro days in uh, in college where we run 40s and that for the pros I wouldn't run my fastest times right. I didn't want them to know how fast I really play was receiver or something like that where they already wanted to do that mm-hmm. so you you would give them even more ammunition exactly. if you if I was more like a four or five guy mm-hmm. when I was in college but all my times would be like four, six, five, right, right, four, right. six. Yeah, you know, to make sure that I wasn't too fast, too fast. to be moved to another position because that's what they wanted to do anyway. Right. So it's too bad that we got penalized for being a good athlete, mm-hmm. even though throwing was my my biggest strength. I had the ability to be able to move, but right. of course they want to put you somewhere where they feel like they could take advantage of that athletic ability, maybe at a receiver, at a defensive mm-hmm. back where you had more speed, you had the speed to be able to play it. Right. For me, I personally, I love sitting in the pocket. I love making mm-hmm. those touchdowns. I love passing. If anybody can ask me if I want to run a touchdown or pass it, to, I'm going to choose the pass. That's no question. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, uh, but sometimes I feel like I get labeled as a running quarterback a lot more than passing, um, especially this past year. Do you guys ever feel like coming up, whether it was high school or college, that your intelligence was ever questioned? All the time. All the time. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like this is going back to that dual threat. I mean, uh, he's a dual threat, so he has a run, so he can't read coverages. He can't read defenses. Yeah, slow he eyes. Can't, yeah, <laughs> he's not going to be as accurate. Right. But really, like you said, that was my strength. Mm-hmm. Like, that was the reason why I was very successful in high school and college, being able to have that knowledge and the IQ of recognizing this and that. And even in the NFL, like when I first came in, like, can he recognize this? Can he throw? Mm-hmm. That was my knockdown. I feel like that's the reason why. I slid to the third quarterback right. in my draft. Mm-hmm. Personally, I feel like I was the best, and my other people did too. Right. But I mean, I guess it just it just comes with the situation. Mm-hmm. With you know, he can't he can't do these things. He can't read coverages because I am labeled as a as a as a dual threat. Mm-hmm. When Vince Young came out of uh, college, mm-hmm. or when, even when Cam came out, when I was working with him when he was coming out of college, they they tried to uh, challenge their Wonderlick scores right. and, and say that their Wonderlick scores were too low for them to be you know successful in the league and and uh, just tried to take everything that they could possibly uh, criticize them on as opposed to taking the things that they did well mm-hmm. and trying to magnify those. They tried to take any little thing they could think of that was negative and try and focus on those things. And yeah. that, that's just kind of part of uh, part of what's being done out there yeah. still to this day. Right. It's, it's crazy how they, they always you know, want to find something. Like for me, it was a little different because of my major, I did engineering. So they kind of said the opposite. They're like, oh, he's too smart to play football. <laughs> it's like, right. it's like he that's football. an oxymoron, right? Yeah, yeah, like, right, right. How can you be too so, smart so where to play? you supposed to play, being yeah, too yeah, smart. Right, right. Exactly. So I think um, it's, amazing, man. Yeah, it's, cra- it's just crazy the things that every year you, you see it. There's always one thing that they try to come up with. But at the end of the day, you know, if they're the best player on the field, right. give them the ball. Right. If they play QB and they're dynamic, mm-hmm. there should be no issues with them playing that position. Right. But what I think is ironic is, is now you look what they're looking for in quarterbacks in today's game, they're looking for quarterbacks that who are like run. us. Right, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Who are dual threat. Yep. Especially with the we, dolls are We've front. always been the dual threat <sighs> who we were always criticized for right, being for that. It. Mm-hmm. Now they're looking for the Carson Wentz exactly. and they're looking for Baker Mayfield, Baker guys Mayfield all those guys who can do a little bit of both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, that's why I said the game is sitting right there for us to dominate right. if we're willing to put the work in and, and do the, and the dedication that it takes to, to right. be good at this position. A lot of people don't understand the weight that is on the quarterback, then you're a black quarterback and you're a rookie or a second year or third year guy. You know what I mean? So even when I was in Buffalo, you know, I felt that weight. Of it. it was just different. It was a culture shock and I had to win right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I had some injuries and I felt like I played well as a rookie. But then my second year, we were two and two. We actually lost to Houston. I think he was still in college. But we lost to Houston, and then like the next week, I was I was benched, 
And so I'm like, dang, like how I get benched? And we was two and two, you know what I mean? We barely lost. I think we lost. I had, I had a pick six of JJ that he, that he housed some choice. They, should, they still <laughs> yeah, show they that still highlight. Yeah, no. Like, dang, <laughs> man. But, you know, it, that's part of it, though. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, you know, Houston is a city that, that wants to win right now. They see the baseball team. They see the basketball team. But deep down in Texas, it's football. Football, no doubt. Football. Mm -hmm. And so they've been, you know, up and down for so long. And then I'm coming in, and it's just like, Man, all the weight is on me. Even when I wasn't the starter at the beginning, I still could feel, feel, it. You still yeah, feel it. Yeah, like yeah. I got to be the one to change it, no and doubt. I got to do it now. Quick, oh yeah. I got to do it now. Yeah. But for me, I got to control myself, and I got a good support cast around me that you know, continue to do what I do. It's gonna come. Don't try to rush it. Because right. if I try to rush it and do it now, then I'm really gonna mess up. I'm gonna fall into their hands. Mm -hmm. Let me play my own cards. Mm -hmm. Let me do what I do. Cause I know what it takes to be able to step on that field each and every Sunday and have a whole city on my back. And, and know that you know everything that I do off the field, on the field matters. Guys are being drafted in the first round, first overall, they're being highly paid, they're being highly endorsed, all those different things. But now does that, does that uh, organization believe in you enough that this guy might not be ready to play right now, but can we develop him and make him into a quarterback? And when they start doing that, that's when you know that they really believe in African-American quarterbacks, that they can play the game, that you'll take a guy maybe in the third round, but you want to make him yeah. a developmental project for the future. Right. Kind of like what they're doing with you in Pittsburgh. They, they're developing you for maybe the day you know, Ben walks away. Mm -hmm. And we want to see more of that around the league, more, more young African-American guys who maybe aren't ready to play when they first come out of college, mm -hmm. but they see down the road that this kid's going to be good for our organization later on. Right. That's when you know that they really made the, uh, the commitment to African-American quarterbacks. Yeah. Do you guys feel like the leash is a little shorter for us as black quarterbacks as far as like, making mistakes or um, any type of negative actions on the field? I felt like at any point the rug could be pulled from under me because of whatever they felt like they needed to do to make that change. And it didn't matter how well you were playing at the time. At one time, I think when I was in Houston, I went to six straight Pro Bowls, and uh, I ended up getting traded after that after wow. that year, where we were we were at 12 and four that year. Uh, like I said, six six straight Pro Bowl, Offensive Player of the Year, and I get traded to the Minnesota Vikings because they felt like Cody Carlson, a guy who was my backup, they had developed him to the point to where wow. he, he was ready to play. Salary cap had something to do with it, right. and and I, I understood that yeah. part of it. Mm -hmm. But I told the general manager when he traded me, I'm like, I'm going to play a lot longer than he will, mm -hmm. and then you're going to regret this, this decision you made. And I played seven more seasons, wow. went to three more Pro Bowls, and he played one year and hurt his knee and was out of the league. Wow. So I haven't experienced it personally, um, but I've seen it from afar. Mm -hmm. Regardless of how much I feel like they love me in Houston or, or wherever I play, anything can happen. I mean, you went. Seven, six straight Pro Bowls mm -hmm. and it's twelve amazing. and forward, and bam, they let you go. It's crazy. You never know. Yeah, you never know. I, I'm like Deshaun. You know, third year in, I haven't personally seen it. Um, I think you know it's there. Did you feel it when you were in college? I think I definitely felt it in college. Yeah. You know, because um, you were at Tennessee, now you were deep down. In yeah, yeah right at Tennessee. <laughs> I mean, and the last one before me was T. Martin. Yeah. So you know, like you come on campus, that pressure's there, but you also know like what they're used to seeing. Right. So you know that when you get your opportunity, I guess it might be the only one you got. Right. So I think that pressure that we feel is what has made us mm -hmm. so successful. Because yeah. you know that, hey, if they give me one play, I'm going to make this my best play I got. And if they give me a whole season, it's going to be the best season I got every single time I step on the field. And that's where our mindset is a little different than other people that take the field in that position. Yeah, I can remember <laughs> during the preseason, uh, going to my third year, I was competing against Tyrod, Matt Castle, and then myself. And uh, I wasn't getting reps with the ones like throughout the entire training camp in the third preseason game. And we all know that's like the, the real one, right? Yeah. Where the team gonna play a little longer. We were actually playing Pittsburgh. And the coach kind of dropped, well, uh, Greg Roman, he had dropped it on me like the day before. Like, yo, you gonna start? I was like, what? <laughs> and yeah, like, and I had, yeah, and I hadn't had really any reps with the ones. And so, you know, I, I think that moment Cause I, I, have, I played great. It's like one of my best games in my career, even though it was preseason, I don't care. Like I, st I put on, I, yeah. I, played, I played amazing. And so I just remember that being a moment where I was like, yo, like any circumstance, as long as you're mentally right in the, in the right spot, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter. 
for you guys, man, like just always be ready to adjust at any moment. And nice. I know you know that because mm -hmm. you started the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. But same for you. Like once you get in that starting role, bro, like just have the mindset like, man, anything can be thrown at you at any moment. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like honestly, Ben could go down, God willing, I hope he, he doesn't get hurt. But say he goes down the first game of the season, then it's your team. You know what right. I mean? So always be on edge and always be alert to, to take that responsibility. I saw it last year, like in the Ravens game, when he went down with him from one play, it was like, during that moment, you don't know like what's going on with them, how many plays you're going to have. And you come in, I think it was like second and 16, you're on the four yard line, they're like, hey, we're going to throw, you know, <laughs> yeah. post over. Right, big you're ready, like, yeah, not even four, warm. Four, yeah. like, okay, yeah. let me yes, get, get right yes, real quick. So it's like, yeah, you see it, it happens so fast, right. but you never know when it comes. Mm -hmm. And you would be really ashamed of yourself if you weren't ready. Yeah. Well, that's why you always have to prepare like you're just yeah. going to start a game, yeah. no matter how many reps you get in practice. Mm -hmm. You got to make those reps work and then you also got to watch a little bit more tape or exactly. whatever it might be to keep yourself uh, ready at any time because you never know like you said when somebody could go down right did you ever have like a moment in like whether it was a game or a practice or a defining moment where you thought of guys like us you know what I'm saying like you're literally opening the door for the younger generation to make it easier for us there was always <laughs> that uh, that responsibility I felt uh, you know coming up because it wasn't a lot of, a lot of us right. Um, I remember when I came into the league in, in the NFL after I had been to Canada and done all these other things, um, th I was the only one. I was the only African-American quarterback in the NFL at that time. And my third quarterback on our team, a guy by the name of Brian Ransom, was the only, he was the backup. And, and everybody else was, was either out of the league, uh, they had started the, the uh, USFL at that time. So Doug Williams and Vince Evans and some of the other African-American quarterbacks had all gone to the USFL. So I was the only one in the NFL. And at that time, I was the highest paid player in the league too. So there was a lot of focus yeah, lot of put on me to, to be Dang. successful, you yeah. know? Even when people were like cheering me, I, I'd hear people behind the bench like, throw that ball like you chuck a watermelon. Mm. And, and wow. just comments like that and it's like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, <laughs> did right. I just hear that? Right. Did I just hear that right? Yeah. Or, or having my son come to me after a game. He was about seven years old at the time. And, and uh, we had, had lost maybe. And he's, at, he's crying and asking me, why are people calling, calling you these, these names? And you having to try and explain all that to him yeah. at, a, at a very young age. So it was, it was definitely something that you had to deal with. So I felt that responsibility that if I didn't do well, then maybe that next generation of guys don't get that opportunity. We're in a generation where now the kids, they see Deshaun, they see Josh, they see my son, right. they, you know what I mean? So what's something that you all want to share to the younger generation that's coming even behind us? Be yourself, you know what I'm saying? But be yourself, but be yourself in a respectable, uh, in a respectable way. And realize that if you're going to be yourself, however that is, it might, it might carry a little bit more weight. So you have to you know, carry yourself at a higher standard than, than the average you know, even the average, you know, African American quarterback. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and realize that every every situation, every decision you make, would you really do it if you knew the consequences behind what you was doing? Because anything that we do as quarterbacks, whether you're white or black, it's gonna get blown up. Right. Regardless. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? So you're a QB at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. QB. Yes, sir. You're CEO. You know, I look I look at us and we've we've made it to them and still working to achieve our dreams. But I've seen a ton of guys. African American QBs that don't make it because they've taken that victim approach. You know, a coach hasn't given them one fair opportunity or they've come across some adversity and they felt like, you know, it's not their fault, it's someone else's fault. But if you are the, you're the aggressor, you're the competitor, that's when you'll go and achieve your goals. So never be the victim, no matter your circumstance, no matter what you go through, just keep pushing. As we all said, you gotta keep working, but never take the victim mentality. I just hope they take advantage of the opportunities that they have here, make sure they put themselves in the best uh, best position to, to get a chance to play this, this position called quarterback. I used to tell all young rookies when they came in the, in the training camp when I was playing, no matter what position they were, don't give the coaches an opportunity to cut you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't put yourself in a position where you can get cut, whether it's making a mental mistake in practice, whether it's missing a tackle, whether it's dropping too many balls, being late for a meeting, whatever it might be, don't give them reasons to cut you make them have to cut you because of whatever reason, but don't you give them a chance to make it easy. And, I, and that's the same thing with playing quarterback. You keep playing the position and do the things you're supposed to do and do it right, um, yeah, you're gonna make some mistakes along the way, but as long as those aren't consistent mistakes and you get right back on track, just don't give them a, an opportunity to, to let you go.
This is an awesome talk, guys. Really appreciate everybody coming together, having this opportunity to speak. Uh, really want to thank Player Tribune and Bevel for this opportunity, putting this thing together for us. Um, so hopefully this is something that we can continue to do on whether it's a yearly basis or something, like, but just to come back and, and talk. So this is awesome.